Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Upskill Space channel. You are watching Data Science Labs playlist and this is the sixth video in the playlist on basics of deep learning. In this video, I'm going to tell you the list of the questions that you can expect on the topic deep learning during the interview. The questions can start with the very simple question, what is deep learning network? Or how, how is neural network different from deep learning network? Are they same? Why it's within deep neural network? So these are the, uh, in order to see how fundamentally you understand or how much you know about the history of deep learning, this sort of question can come in. And of course, the answer is not expected in terms of some technical answers, but in general, intuition wise, or how do you know, how, what do you have you read about it? That's what it, it, it is expected. And you can rephrase the answer any way you want. The next question that can be, that can be, can neural network be used always? Well, these questions will be asked mostly to understand if you understand the difference between deep neural network or deep learning and machine learning in general. So whenever I'm going to use the term machine learning, here I'm talking about classical machine learning. Although deep learning is a part subset of machine learning, I'm relating here deep learning in contrast with the classical machine learning models. I have already discussed about the classical machine learning models in the my class machine learning concepts video. You can watch that if you have missed it. Now, yeah, so do you understand the difference between deep learning and classical machine learning models? Can we use deep learning always, every time? Well, the answer is, of course, no. So be aware of that. Do not get overexcited and say, yes, deep learning is the advanced technique and it should be used every time, everywhere. No, it's totally wrong. The major limitation of the deep learning is that it does not work with small data set. It fails badly, miserably on a small data set. So that's one of the biggest disadvantage of deep learning. So deep learning can only be used if you have big data, if you have data in terms of gigabytes, or if you have unstructured data, which eventually are always a big data form like images, audio, videos, etc. So yes, deep learning cannot be used always. For first and foremost requirement is you need to have a lot of data. In terms of a structured data, if you talk or tabular data, you should have more than uh, 1 million records. And then only deep learning actually gives a good answer. Uh, when I say a good answer, a better performance, a performance that can be relied on. Then the next question can be um, on um, general on the architectures. What are the various architectures or what are the various types of deep, deep learning are you aware of? So there are the segregation this way, discriminative architectures. We have generative architectures. Within discriminative architectures, you can have fully connected architecture, uh, CNN, RNN, LSTM. Within generative architecture, you can have autoencoder, variational autoencoder, GAN. So, well, uh, these are again uh, different architectures suggested by uh, a broader architectures within deep learning, which are popular for various specific data type. For example, fully connected architectures are considered to be good for on, on tabular data. But when it when you have images, uh, then or visual data, then in this case, convolutional neural networks or CNN are considered to be good architecture because this solves a lot of problems specific to that data structure. Whenever you have sequential data sets or time series data sets, then RNN or LSTM, which is a better form of RNN, this is assumed to solve a lot of the uh, problems. And uh, well, nowadays a new form of architectures have arrived, something called transformers, uh, so which are also used in place of LSTM for sequential and text data. 
And then when you have, uh, you, you want to perform a learn from data or generate more data apart from learning from data, then you can go ahead with something called autoencoders, variational autoencoder or VAE and GAN. So these all are different sort of architectures and various form of classifications that's there in the neural um, neural network architecture forms. Um, I have already made a detailed video on this uh, with a lot of graphics and uh, the video you can find um, in the playlist by the name uh, data science interview question part three uh, tip and uh, in there you'll get the whole detail about this whole classification if you are interested go ahead and watch it going further what are the there are a list of the concepts in deep learning too uh, that is not specific to any particular uh, network or model but rather it's general and you must be familiar with all of them uh, not just get be familiar technically but also you should be able to describe it uh, or uh, explain it in the layman words to the anybody who is not from non-technical background and uh, why i'm asking you to do so because this can be one of the interview questions Interviewers like to understand what's your understanding of these concepts. Um, if you just discard the technical definition given on internet. So back propagation could be a very popular question that can happen and a lot of the time. In fact, uh, many interviewers ask, can you explain back propagation in simple word to a layman person or to a person who is from non-technical background or to a kid? Um, because that, that question is asked to test your understanding of back, back propagation. Do you understand its significance in the neural network architecture? What will happen if you remove back propagation from neural network architecture? Well, the whole uh, revolution that has happened till today in neural networks architectures, uh, it's all thanks to back propagation. It, that's like a, a spinal code of this whole deep learning framework. And if that will be removed, then I think and the deep learning will fail to work further. Anyway, then there will be question on dropout. Do you understand what a dropout is? It's significant, uh, uh, what problem it solves? Well, dropout is one of the regularization technique in deep learning, so be familiar with that. There will be uh, then batch normalization. Batch normalization is also one of the normalization technique um, that is basically used to normalize data. And then we have various regularization methods. Again, we have L1, L2, elastic rate. Again, we discussed about this during the um, DSML concepts video. What, what are the various types of regularization, pros and cons? You can watch that video to get more details on it. Then we, you can also talk about optimization again. Again, optimization is again one of the core and very important um, part of the architecture. Without optimization, in combination with back propagation, so much revolution would were not possible. So yes, what optimizer does exactly that you should be familiar with. You should be able to explain in very simple words what happens during optimization. What are the type of optimizers we have? What is a learning rate? What it indicates? Uh, and um, of course, there are various type. There, there were. Uh, no, uh, auto, now the recent one is called ADA optimizer, very popular. There is RMS prop optimizer before ADA it was there. So although there's a whole history of various time gradually at the top stage right now, we have ADA optimizer, which is widely used and solves a lot of problems. So be familiar with the ADA optimizer at, at, to the most. And then uh, gradient, uh, gradient uh, stochastic gradient descent. What is stochastic gradient descent? Um, this is sometimes difficult to understand this concept, but this is a part of your optimization process. So you must know what happens in stochastic gradient descent. What sort of problem is solved when you pass data in form of batch? Uh, what, ha what happens if you don't pass in a batch? Okay, have you ever heard of uh, back propagation in that something called gradient descent? Okay, uh, vanishing effect. So, well, there is something called vanishing effect, okay, uh, error vanishing effect uh, that happens if you don't pass data as a batch. 
So get familiar again. These are advanced concepts. These are optional to know. That's why I have not added them on the slide. Uh, but if you know, it's always added advantage. Um, so get familiar with those concepts if you are interested. Otherwise, to the minimum, you must know about the concepts on the slide. Um, and if you can answer them with an examples to the interviewer, the interviewer is going to be more impressed on you, with you compared to the rest of the candidate in the queue. So I hope this slide is helpful to you. Uh, and now I will come with the next slide on the SQL queries. Um, till then you have a happy learning. Thank you.